There are a lot of really interesting use cases being explored with blockchain right now. When you first get into blockchain, one of the areas you'll see people immediately jump to are healthcare. How can we manage our personal health information on the blockchain and voting and election reform? And both of these are really, really interesting ideas. The goal behind the folks looking at blockchain for healthcare is the idea that it would be great if your medical records could be accessible with your permission to anyone else anywhere on the planet. So if you're halfway across the world on vacation and you fall ill and end up in a hospital, wouldn't it be great if the doctor treating you had full insight into your medical records, knew any allergies you had, uh, or knew any prescriptions that you were already on? Um, so that's a very, very big area, and this ties a lot into blockchain and identity management. How do we safely identify and protect people's personal data on blockchain? So a lot of interesting challenges there that are being worked out. Um, blockchain for voting and election reform uh, is a big big topic right now, um, especially with all the conversation lately about how do we ensure the integrity of elections and demonstrate that our results haven't been tampered with or altered. And this is an area where blockchain could add a lot of value. And then of course we hear a lot about traditional use cases, areas that are getting a lot of uh, traction in blockchain right now. Probably one of the biggest are supply chain value chain relationships, which are very, very common in today's economy. Uh, we have very, very few products or services that are offered completely and solely by one organization without the involvement of other vendors, partners, suppliers, manufacturers, third-party organizations, etc. Um, so blockchain to track the supply, the origin of the goods and services that we consume is a big use case. Walmart is really pioneering this right now with a blockchain solution that they're using to identify uh, the provenance of meat. Where does the meat that is sold in a Walmart store come from? And the ultimate goal here is that when we do have contaminated foods and we have to issue a recall, currently because we just don't have good insight into that supply chain, we recall and destroy a lot more food than we really need to, which is uh, tremendously wasteful, especially with all the people on the planet that we could be giving that good food too. Um, so these are some real, real exciting areas that we see being pursued in blockchain right now. On um, the public sector, there's a lot of interest in blockchain for law enforcement purposes. How do we allow different law enforcement agencies at the federal, state, county, city level, all to share data seamlessly in a safe, secure fashion, which also protects people's personal privacy and anonymity when appropriate. Another area where blockchain is getting explored and is generating a lot of excitement is with artists, with people who produce content. Uh, so if you're an author, if you're a musician, um, if you're an artist, traditionally you've only been able to get your work uh, out to the public in the hands of the public by going through a third party intermediary. So if I'm an author, uh, traditionally the only way I've been able to share my creation with the general public has been going to a publishing company and getting my works published. Uh, blockchain enables lots of interesting scenarios where I can sell Sell that work directly to consumers, create new subscription models, and this is having very interesting effects on the work itself. Uh, one of the things we're seeing is that traditional book publishing, uh, there's anywhere between a 12 to 18 month delay between when the author finishes the last word of a book and when it actually ends up in a consumer's hands. Uh, well, if we can use blockchain to enable consumers to purchase this material or subscribe directly to the content creator, we take that lag time completely out of it. And this allows authors and content creators to do some really interesting things. You could write a fictional story and have one of your characters respond real time to a news story that actually happened last week. Uh, it makes for very compelling reading and it's just something we're not able to do today in the traditional publishing world because of that delay. Uh, we also see a lot of interest in blockchain for fractional asset ownership scenarios. Um, <clears throat> so we, we know we're 10, 15 years away from having self-driving cars be a very regular thing. And when we all get our own self-driving car, if we're smart, we're going to have that car take us to work and then turn around and perform ride-sharing services throughout the day when we're not using it in order to recoup some of that investment. Well, in a blockchain world with 
coins and tokens, we can fractionalize that asset ownership. And I could take that same money I used to buy one self-driving car, which operates in one city, and I could buy 1% 1 of 100 self-driving cars in the 100 biggest cities in the planet. And so if there are ever weather conditions uh, where maybe my car couldn't operate locally, that's okay. I have a much more diversified investment, which continues to offer returns uh, because I have a virtual guarantee that any major city that I have 1% of my car ownership in is currently in rush hour right now in peak times of people needing a ride. Um, so there are lots of very, very interesting use cases for blockchain in the real world right now. Um, I would encourage all of you to dig in a little bit more and see some of the interesting things that are going on with blockchain in healthcare, in public sector, in insurance, in supply chain, value chain, and more. See what other folks are doing and then go out and make your own blockchain dreams a reality.